Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Breck Rowell. All right, it's the first day of my short weekend this week. We're finally off maintenance cycle. And you may recall a couple weeks ago, I went and did a little hike around Woodway Park, which I guess they now call Lakeshore Park or Lakeside Park. And I guess it's under new management or something like that. And the people who are managing the park have included a couple of bike paths in there. And I've been thinking, you know what, it'd be fun to get the bike out and kind of ride around back there and see what's going on. Uh, but one of the problems when you're on kind of a dirt, dirt road on a bike is you kind of need to keep both hands on the handlebar and you can't necessarily ha use a hand to hold a camera. So I've been thinking for a while it'd be kind of fun to find a, uh, a camera mount that would go on the handlebars and uh, do stuff like that. So. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run over to Walmart, I think, because I've seen online that they seem to have uh, that kind of thing. And let's take a look at what they got and see if we can figure out something that'll work for us. Now, one of the concerns I have about putting a camera mount on the bicycle is how stable is the image going to be when I'm riding around? Yes, it's true the bike has shock absorbers. Yes, it's true the camera I have has image stabilization software on it. but. How well is that going to work on a bicycle on a dirt road? So I don't know. That's one of the things I got to look is to figure out what they can do to stabilize the camera so the camera isn't doing this kind of thing. And uh, we'll have to kind of see what, what they have over there and maybe we're going to get something and just go out and try it and see what happens. So I've been to Walmart and I found they had a couple things that were kind of there that uh, were kind of geared towards attaching a camera to a bicycle but it seemed like they were more geared towards attaching a cell phone to the bicycle they had a clamp that went onto the handlebars and then like rubber bands that went around the corners of your phone to hold your phone securely on the on the uh, handlebar so I started looking online and I found a place called Bicycle World in downtown and I figured you know what maybe a specialty bike store is gonna be the way to go so let's check them out see what we can find out so apparently this isn't as common of a thing as I would have figured it would have been. I figured this was going to be, let's go to Walmart, we'll find one in the store and pick it up and walk home with it and be good to go. Yeah, Walmart couldn't help. These guys had something similar to the ones they had at Walmart with the rubber bands that go around, um, you know, the corners of your phone. But there's nothing specifically that has the typical camera mount on it. And that's what I need on this. So I'm going to keep looking. It turns out there's a, a sporting goods store around here that I didn't think about that I saw online that might have bike supplies. So we're going to see what they got there. If not, we may end up just having to buy something online and go that way. So uh, off to Academy Sports. But while we're downtown and real close to the Waco Suspension Bridge, let's go over and check that out and see what's going on. They've been refurbishing that for oh, the last year, year and a half or so. And my understanding uh, from what I heard online is they've recently replaced the suspension cables and they're in the process of installing those. So let's go take a look. Well, as you can see, they have strung the main cables across here. They don't have the, the cables that come down and suspend the bridge at this point, but those are all brand new cables. And actually the framework is looking pretty nice on it now. It's always looked a little bit on the rusty side. So, you know, this thing has been here for more than a century and definitely needs uh, an update. Don't want to have something like this that's so iconic here in Waco uh, end up collapsing into the river. That'd be kind of embarrassing, right? Looking forward to being able to walk on this again, though. It's kind of a cool thing to have down here and I kind of miss having the opportunity to walk over the river on it. All right, here we are at Academy Sports. Let's see what they got to offer. So I went over to Academy Sports. They didn't have anything for me. I also went over to the Richland Mall because there's like a Dick Sporting Goods in here. I thought maybe they might have something, but they all seem to have just kind of the same junk, which is, you know, it's really designed more for uh, putting a cell phone on a handlebar rather than a camera. You know, a lot of cameras have kind of a consistent camera mount. Nobody has one that I've been able to find so far where I can just get the one with the mount. So, I don't know, I think I'm gonna probably have to give up and do something online. I'm sure somebody's got something online that'll work, but 
you know what that's what happens sometimes you got to look to see what's out there to figure out that you really should have just gone online first right all right well i tried really hard to find some local vendor that could do something like this i was completely unsuccessful but I'm looking right now on Amazon.com and this is exactly what I need. Basically this clamps onto the handlebars here. My understanding is this can be as, as big in diameter as uh, one and a quarter inches in diameter. So that's big. That'll definitely fit on the handlebars. And it's got a traditional camera mount on the top. So uh, I'm going to try ordering one of these. Let's see how this works for us. I think this will be pretty good for me. Uh, uh, it allows me, you know, I can uh, set the, the level of the camera. So the fact that I'm going to be mounting it onto a part of the handlebar that isn't exactly level with the ground, I can adjust that here and keep the image nice and stable. So I think I'm going to order one of these. Uh, it should be here in a couple days, according to what they're saying. Uh, I should be able to have it on Tuesday. So let's get this ordered and let's see what comes up, what comes of it. All right, we got the thing ordered. It should be here on Tuesday, which is still part of my my shirt weekend. So uh, we'll see if this thing comes on Tuesday. And uh, if it does, we'll maybe take it out for a ride. So I'll see you on Tuesday. All right, two days have passed and I got the attachment for the handlebars in the mail. And I've looked at this thing. It looks like the perfect thing. This clamps onto the handlebars here. And that is a standard uh, camera mount. So let's go put this thing on the on the handlebars and see what it looks like. All right, so that's how that's going to look. And that'll actually work pretty well, I think. I'm actually halfway thinking since there's very little uh, available space with all the stuff that I have on here with the headlight and the reflector and, and the gear selector and my little bell. Uh, I'm actually halfway thinking I may rotate this thing around and hang the camera underneath and it would be down here. Now, I don't know if the camera itself has the ability to flip the video upside down in case I post the camera or hang the camera upside down, but I know when I get it into my editing software that I could flip it. So, I don't know, we may play with that. You know, the concern with this right now is is if I were to wipe out, then the camera is going to probably take the brunt of the uh, the uh, impact. Whereas if it's underneath there, then it's kind of protected a little bit. But uh, what we're going to do, you know, it's it's kind of the end of the day right now. And I got to go to work tomorrow. So I'm probably not going to experiment with too much more with this now. But we'll take it out in the next few days, maybe in my next weekend. And we'll see if this is actually going to work and uh, whether I can get usable video out of it. Like I said, the main concern I had was that the image may be really shaky. Uh, doing this now technically the bike has shock absorbers and technically the camera has image stabilization software so you know who knows this may be good this may not be so good but we'll we'll at least get a chance to try it and it'd be fun to actually be able to take the bike out and take you along on a bike ride so even if this doesn't work in the bike path uh, by lakeside uh, drive there you know maybe this is just gonna be one of those things i take down to cameron park and and ride on the paved trails down there that'd be kind of fun too right so anyway uh we'll try this a little bit later and uh see if this works for us but it came in it's doing exactly what i needed it's also kind of cool i don't really particularly need it but it came with a gopro mount too so i do have a gopro and if i felt like uh you know putting the gopro on the handlebars i could do that too now the GoPro doesn't have quite the image stabilization software that that the uh, Canon camera has, but you know what? It's good to have. Won't, won't complain about something free, right? All right. So just to put things into perspective, a few days have passed since I shot that last scene. That last scene was shot at the end of my last day off before I went back to work, and so I've done a whole work uh, week now, and I'm on my next weekend. And it's time to go out and uh, try this new camera mount out and see how well it does. Now, one of the advantages that came from taking five days off uh, between scenes is that it gave me a little time to think about this, and I just realized that I have now mounts that I can plug the camera I'm using right now to vlog. I can also plug my cell phone into it and I can uh, plug my GoPro onto it. So I'm figuring I'm going to take all three of them out and we're going to do a little side-by-side -side comparison, see how well each of them does and if there is any noticeable difference between uh, the different cameras. Honestly, I think the vlogging camera is going to be the, is going to probably be the winner because it's the one that's got the 
the most potent image stabilization software on it. The other two are gonna probably be bouncy, but I'm not really sure how any of this is gonna work. So we're gonna run out and go over to Lakeside Park. Lakeside Park, as you recall, used to be called Woodway Park. And last time I went there for a little hike, um, the, the new owners or the new managers or whatever have reconfigured some of the hiking trails into biking trails. So I am going to uh, get my bike ready to go and we're gonna run over there and we're gonna check the three cameras to see how this camera mount does. And the bike is ready for a bike ride. I do see with this that I think is going to be an issue is that the camera mount itself doesn't seem to hold the camera very steady so it tends to rock around a little bit. I'm trying to figure out even how to get through here. I've never been back here before. I guess I'm supposed to kind of go right over that but I don't think we're going to try that today. Not gonna do that either. All right, so since it kind of seems to me that none of the cameras are really doing very well in that off-road mode, just because uh, the holder isn't holding them st steady enough, I decided to see what happens when I ride it on the street. So this is the cell phone camera. 
uh, just on on the asphalt on the side of the street. All right, so this is the Canon camera. This is my primary vlogging camera, the one with all the good image stabilization. And honestly, except for occasional bumps I hit, the camera seems to be pretty, staying pretty steady. All right, I'm back to the car, and I gotta say my initial instinct is uh, this particular mount isn't really probably the type of thing I'm gonna wanna use on like off-road things. Now, I'm interested more off more than anything else now to see how it does uh, on the smooth road. And uh, with a GoPro, I can't even look at that because it doesn't have a monitor. And with the cell phone, the camera was painted pointed away from me so I couldn't really see that one the only one I could see was the uh, was the Canon camera and it seemed, it seemed a little bumpy but I want to see what the image stabilization software does so let's go get all this footage off these cameras get them in the computer and let's see what we got all right I'm back from the park now I put all the video on the computer and I gotta say I'm actually a little surprised at the results I think the clear winner in terms of uh, video stability has got to be the GoPro now, unfortunately, you trade that off because the GoPro also has the worst audio because the camera itself is contained within the plastic case, which basically locks out a lot of the sound. The Canon camera, on the other hand, was, uh, I was a little disappointed with that. I think uh, part of the problem with that is that it's such a large, bulky camera compared to, say, the weight of the GoPro or even the weight of the camera that uh, when it's bounced around a lot, it you know, it really bangs around there a lot, it moves around a lot, and it just does not do as good of a job at uh, stabilizing the image when there's so much of a mass of the camera. There's also kind of the issue that there was a weird rattling sound, and I don't know, that might have been because I had the screen partially extended so that I could see what was going on, uh, but that I found a little bit irritating too, and it might also need to be connected to the uh, to the uh, mount a little bit more securely. It might have been rattling that way too. Um, the audio on there was uh, was decent. The video was maybe a little less than decent. Uh, so as I said, the Canon camera, I was a little disappointed in the results on that. Now, uh, in terms of best audio, that definitely came from the uh, cell phone. Uh, that had the, the far the best audio, but far the worst video. The video, was almost unwatchable. It's exactly what you would expect from a shaky camera. So I don't know if in the future I might end up just having to stick with the GoPro. It may not be the perfect thing for uh, for you know if you want to talk, but you know maybe I'll just have to bring an audio recorder and dub the two over each other. But anyway, yeah, that was the result. So I'm kind of surprised by that. So I think that's all that I have for today. Thank you as always for watching, and I'll see you next time on Escaping the Mouse. Good night.